Cascade, you're not welcome here. I told Sherman he could be in this video, I guess. Hi, everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas with Cascade the Wonder Dog, who got chastised by Sherman the One-Eyed Toothless Dog. Sherman wanted to be in a video, so here he is. Hey, this is part three of the, um, the multi-combo rocket stove build. So let me put Sherman down and uh, start you off. This is going to take me a little bit of time because I'm going to have to make a trip all the way to Alpine to get some parts. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not planning on going to Alpine until Monday, and today is Wednesday, so I'm that far off. But there's a lot I can do, and I'm going to show you what I've got here. Uh, I think the rocket stove is positioned pretty close to where it's going. I have to slide it all the way back up in here. I'm ready to punch out the uh, bottles. Here comes the wind. I'm ready, I'm ready to punch out the bottles. Uh, to push the um, the um, exhaust stack through, and uh, I've got my fire brick down here. Well, all but a half a piece. I couldn't find any more of my fire brick, but I've got enough fire brick to form a base for this, which will also lift it up. Uh, so I thought I'd show you this, and then I'm going to get started doing some of the masonry, setting the fire brick down, punching out the back, pouring the, uh, the slab for the uh, chimney that has to go up behind it. Uh, little things like that, things you're not going to see right off is going to be me pouring the slab in the new mechanical room to put the two hot water tanks in there and I've got to start plumbing that. So, got a lot to do. Start off by showing you this. Back in the background are some of the bricks I'm going to use to, uh, to lock this thing in so I can pour uh, my adobe mud in all the way around the rocket stove. So, I'm off to work. Oh, Mr. Ham it up is right here. Hey, uh, moving on, there's some other stuff we have to do before I can set the uh, set the rocket stove in place. And so we're going to work on the chimney right now. Now the idea behind this chimney is we only need one about that big around. So I'm lining it up here with what's going to be the exhaust port here. But beyond that also, uh, and you can't see in the in this picture. But I have a, a um, ledge up on top there. So I have this lined out as a, as a um, oh, about a half a circle here. I don't want it to be a half a circle. I want it to be three quarters of a circle so that when I get up to that ledge, I can encroach on the ledge and go on up. It's give me a little more stability as I go up because this thing's got to run up about, uh, about 12 feet, this chimney. And it's only going to be about 20... It looks to be about 20 inches wide. So I'm going to get building on that and come back and show you as I get up a few layers. We're doing it entirely out of these Mexican Coke bottles, which have a slight green tint to them. And that green tint in, uh, with the sunlight hitting, it should be really awesome to look at. Let me get started. Well, a few days have passed, and I've got part of the chimney up, as you can see. It probably has to go, oh, about here would be halfway. So it's got quite a ways to go. It's got to get up as high as Wellesley over there, which I think is uh, pretty close to 40, uh, 40 rows high, 41, 42 rows high. Anyway, it's coming along. I'm doing kind of a slip form here where I am pulling this up as I go and it's making the form. So I don't need to be leveling. I just need to push every one of these in as they start to harden. Make sure they're pushed in good and tight. Just keep pulling that up so it stays nice and loose. All the way to the top, then pull it out. This is going to be one of the um, uh, pipes for our um, hydroponics. Um, and uh, a couple of things. First of all, oh, here comes the wind. It knows I'm doing a video. Hey, wind. Doesn't help. Uh, first of all, if you saw the part two where I did the burn, you saw smoke coming out the uh, front and out the back. Now that's because I didn't have, I'll get closer because I think the wind's come up. Um, that's because I didn't have a, uh, a chimney to draw. Now for those of you that don't know why or how a chimney draws, which is a lot of you, which just, you know, if you're a guy like me, you don't even want to ask for directions, let alone, um, uh, let alone ask, well, why, why does a chimney have to draw. So, you've got the exhaust coming out here, but you've got no pressure, nothing really sucking it out. You just have it being pushed out by, by, the, uh, by the air coming through. So if you create a chimney, an enclosed space, 
where that hot air rises, as hot air does, that hot air rising creates a suction effect. Now, it's very similar to the solar chimneys that I always talk about from uh, uh, early Yemenese architecture when Yemen was not being blown apart by uh, stupidity. But um, the early Yemenese architecture incorporated solar chimneys, although they didn't call them that, but it was just a place where the hot, the hot air rose and sucked the cooler air in and kept an airflow through the house. Well, it's the same thing here. The air comes out here about where the chimney, um, uh, the exhaust is, it creates a column of rising air which further sucks more air through and in sucking that air through, it'll stop that smoke from wanting to back up through the input, um, the input uh, vent. So that's why a chimney is important, and of course you have to get it high so it doesn't blow smoke inside your house. Now, there's not a whole lot to show you. I'm going to make a change here. This is going to be 2.5 on the on the build, and it's going to be 2.5 because to finish this whole thing out is probably going to take me another week to 10 days. And why? Well, why? money. Now I want to show you a little bit of what we're doing because it's going to be about 10 days before we have enough money to, to, to pick up and buy the plumbing we need. Plus I have to go back into Alpine. Uh, about all I can do is build up this chimney. That's going to take five or six days anyway to get that chimney up because I can only go up about nine layers a day uh, because it starts moving at the bottom if I don't. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you inside kind of sort of where I'm going and uh, we'll end this video 2.5 and 3.0 that will be the test burn where we're going to um, show how this thing works and how it's plumbed in to give us domestic hot water. We're a zero carbon footprint. Well the stove's just sitting here right now because I have to permanently mount it. As you can see it's got to be leveled and um, I've got to put my brick, which I'm going to use this brick that was donated to us by Acme Brick. Acme Brick had faith in this project and they said, yeah, we're going to donate some brick to you. So if you have an opportunity, if you need brick, go to Acme Brick first because they believe in sustainability and they believe in, in uh, this kind of life and they don uh, donated this. So I'm going to use some of their brick, not all of it, just a little bit of their brick to build up on the outsides here and also right here on both sides. I can't hold it right to show you. Like so. And I've also got a cool vintage, a very cool vintage thermometer I'm going to mount here that'll tell me what the water coming out of this uh, is just in case it starts to get up there towards the boiling point which under 60 pounds of pressure could be dangerous. Uh, got to do my plumbing back here. I've got to convert this from 3 8 inch to a half inch and then the, the PEX is in place, I just have to connect it outside of the uh, box. Pour my mud in there, which will be part three, and we are ready to go. So, I just thought I'd tell you that. Give you something to watch until uh, next, the end of next week when I have this thing finished. And until the end of next week when I have this thing finished, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in far west Texas, and he's saying, see you later.